Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and welcome to my day one Necropolis Discoveries. So, kicking us off, Necropolis is a lead mechanic with three different components to it, as opposed to the usual one. It has the golden monster modifiers, which give you increased loot from mobs in your map, it has the all flames, and it has the crafting. Now, the first two are not something I've spent an excessive amount of time on my first day here, so we're going to be leaving those two later videos to experiment with. But what I have spent a lot of time with is the crafting, which is going to be the focus of this video here. Now, to get us started, I want to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about my opinion on this mechanic. So first and foremost, I did a lot of study on Necropolis uh, before the league even came out. There was a very informative interview with the director of Path of Exile in one of Zizarin's interviews with him. And he gave a lot of information away about how this mechanic actually works and the coding behind it. So I feel like I had a pretty big competitive advantage on understanding and making items with this mechanic over your average player. And that's why I think I actually probably we had better than average results uh, with my initial day of crafting. But I will go on record and say that I don't really think it's possible to make an excellent or even outstanding or even let alone good item with the mechanic without a reasonable understanding of how it all works and also without using Craft of Exile. Yep, it's another one of those leagues I consider Necropolis Crafting to basically require the use of Craft of Exile uh, if you want to make something which is good uh, in a reasonable fashion. So that is, is what it is. It's another league where you have to use an external website and source. It's pretty much uh, nigh impossible to get any deterministic way of understanding exactly what the modifiers are going to do without using Craft of Exile. So, yep, that's going to be explained in this video as well. But the Necropolis, let me take you guys through it. So in your maps, you're of course going to come across Haunted Monsters. And those Haunted Monsters are going to be all of the natural inhabitants of the map. And each and every one of them has a chance uh, to give you an unresolved spirit anguish or whatever it's called here. Let's get the exact wording. It says, Haunted Monsters in your maps are may have unresolved anguish. That is the chance for them to become a corpse which you can cut back off to the morgue. So if you want to get more corpses, take all the nodes down here, which say increased chance of unresolved anguish, and this one here, which literally gives you 25% chance to duplicate monsters and give you an additional corpse. So you can get quite a lot more extra corpses uh, by taking the nodes on the tree there which is pretty good. Uh, but once you have those corpses, you can come to the morgue and you can plant them in the ground here. Now, planting them in the ground uh, at first glance probably doesn't seem too impactful, but it actually is pretty damn important. The first thing you guys are going to want to know is that any corpse which is not connected to another corpse will not share its crafting outcomes. So what I mean by that is that all the crafts up here, if I hit craft here and I craft my item with it, uh, that will not use any of the other corpses which are not connected, which means you can have multiple crafting projects on the go at the same time which can be a good way to dump a lot of the corpses out of your morgue uh, if it is full. The other thing you guys are going to want to know is that the uh, the kind of yellow highlights here on which pop up uh, is actually pretty important as well. It means that those two or three, four or whatever uh, graves are adjacent to the one you are highlighting here. Now this is important because there are actually corpses which give you increased effect or you know modifiers or all sorts of stuff like that uh, to adjacent uh, corpses or corpses in a column. Uh, and that means that you can get a lot of extra juice uh, from the Herrera modifiers as well. So you can position them next to other corpses and you know get a little bit of extra efficiency there which is pretty pretty damn good. Now that we understand how placing corpses works, let me give you guys a little bit more info on exactly how all of the UI works and all sorts of stuff like that, and then we'll get straight into the actual crafting of items, as well as a few items I've already crafted. Alright, so if you guys want to check out all of your crafts real quick smart, uh, you can view the Necropolis Morgue by using this uh, menu here, and you can view everything. Now if you don't want any of these modifiers for whatever reason, uh, you can go ahead and burn it and it will instantly delete it. And now you can do this in maps as well, you just have to wait for the guy to walk out of his portal. For example, if you get a really good modifier and you're full, just try and claim it, he'll walk out of the gate, and then you can destroy something else already in your morgue by doing what I just did there to him. You can also purchase uh, empty coffins off of the morgue guy here, which are essentially like bestiary orbs, and you can walk into this area here, which has all of your crafts, and you can right click on a co uh, coffin and orb or put any of these corpses into the coffin which will turn it into a tradable item which you can list, sell, and store in however many want, uh, you want to 
which is pretty damn good there as well. So that's pretty much all you guys need to know about the uh, the, the morgue. Uh, the other thing I'll just give you guys as a bit of a quick tip. Uh, if you're removing a corpse, make sure you really don't want it because it does delete it. I removed a few because I thought it picked them up uh, and I lost a bit of money there. But uh, that's pretty much everything you guys need to know. So let's dive into the actual crafting aspect of it. So first and foremost, I'll show you guys a few items I have made uh, with the Necropolis crafting. Uh, this was all very, very early on. So keep that in mind when you look at the, um, the kind of rolls on it and stuff like that. This was a bow I made in like the first six or seven hours of the league, which was pretty good. Uh, and this is a chess piece I made, you know, a few hours after that, uh, which I actually made it so it came six linked. Now, I didn't have a full grasp of how the mechanic worked when I made these two items. So they're definitely not uh, optimal by any means, of the, like, you know, at all. Uh, but they're definitely not bad. They're definitely serviceable and I could equip them and I was pretty happy with them at the time. You know, not very good by today's standards, uh, you know, in day two, but you know, decent nonetheless. Uh, so overall, I made these items. Let me explain to you guys exactly the process of making them, uh, how I made them and all sorts of stuff like that, but also how I'm planning on making way better items uh, with a necropolis. And then maybe if we have time, we can get into min maxing it. But there's a lot to unpack here and a lot to uncover. Now, I don't blame you guys if you click off the video halfway through and you're like, this isn't for me. I'm not doing this stuff. It's way too hard. Uh, but I assure you guys, don't worry. Once all the smart people figure everything out, uh, it's actually going to be a lot easier to interact with than you might think because you can definitely make recipes which are very easy to execute, follow, and all you need to do is find all the right corpses uh, of trade or gathering them and just put them in the ground and follow the instructions exactly and you will get the exact same item as the person who has cooked up the craft. It's kind of the big brain figuring it out stuff uh, which is probably going to be either for you or not for you uh, which is very similar to the Synthesis League and Harvest League uh, which we've had in the past. I, I feel like this one's even maybe a little bit more complicated. But let me take you through it. Let's dive into a spreadsheet shall we okay let's get into it so first thing you guys are going to want to know uh, is this is a spreadsheet here i made with all of the different necropolis crafts uh, there is a lot of crafts which you guys could get and there's a lot of different numerical ranges that you can get as well which is going to dictate you know how much you get of each of the modifiers uh, but the main thing you guys gonna need to know there is three main crafts you guys are going to be interacting with in the necropolis league when you're crafting items here so the first one is going to be increased chance of modifiers now in order to understand what on earth this means as i mentioned you guys are going to need to have craft of exile open on your second monitor or you're going to have knowledge about all the information on craft of exile without it you're basically dead in the water you are a, a fish out of water it's not going to be any good so let me explain all of how that works to you guys all right, so modifiers. What does this mean? Increased chance of fire modifiers. Well, this is referring to the weight of a modifier with a specific tag. So let's take this one here. This is a bow on Craft of Exile. You can come here and you can peruse all the modifiers that a bow can roll here. Now, the way that mods roll in PoE is it uses a weight system here. So an item on the prefix, for example, let's say we want to roll a prefix, roll the dice. The game is going to check the total weight of an item here, uh, which is 56,000. 658 here for prefixes on bows assuming it's item level 86 and it's going to compare all of the weights of all these different tier mods and it's going to pick one uh, so for example uh, the most likely chance to roll on a bow is going to be one of cold fire or lightning damage because they have the highest weights uh, you have an 11,536 out of 56,658 chance uh, at rolling uh, a cold modifier on your prefix here if you were going to roll a prefix uh, and that's that's kind of how it works it's kind of a fractional system uh, and it does work with that now within each of the different modifiers you have tiers which i'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, and each tier generally has a lower chance to roll here so overall, that's kind of how mods are determined. Now, what these modifiers do is it increases your chance to get a specific type of modifier based on a tag system. So you can see all the modifiers here have specific tags. So this one here, this leech, is attack physical mana. Now, if I used a physical increased chance of modifiers, I would increase all of the weight of all physical tagged modifiers here. So let's say I increased the physical modifier chance by 100%. Uh, it would make everything with physical twice as big. Now, this is important because it's going to make it twice as big compared to the other modifiers which is essentially going to you know increase your chance at getting them substantially overall it will increase the total weight in the pool but it'll also increase your chance of getting the modifier with the weight that it has uh, basically more chance to get the stuff which you want and you have chosen which is really really good now we also have the inverse of this as well so modifiers are scarcer and that'll basically do the opposite it'll reduce the weight of the item which will make it harder to get that on your item here when you roll it uh, uh, so you can kind of combine this. For example, a really, really interesting thing here is uh, that pretty much every single modifier on bow prefixes have the attack tag. So let's say we used uh, less uh, scarcer, sorry, um, of the attack tag. So attack modifiers are 
1000% scarcer, which you can do in the morgue quite easily. Uh, it would take all of the weights of all the different attack ones here, and it would divide them by 10. So it would be 180 weight for elemental damage here, 377.5 for physical damage. Uh, everything would be reduced except one, which is this one here, plus one level of socketed gems, which is pretty cool. Now you have a way, 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 way higher chance at getting plus one level socket of gems, which is pretty damn good. Now, the other thing you can do is combine these two. So if we reduce all the attack modifiers and then also increased the gem modifiers, now suddenly we're, you know, compounding this. We're getting a much higher chance at one modifier and way less. Uh, it's not full on blocking modifiers like we had in Harvest, uh, but it's damn close to. You're getting really, really good odds on doing exactly the modifiers you want, uh, which is pretty damn cool. Now, that would be all good and dandy, but even if you did that, I can guarantee you all of the items you would craft, or the majority of them, sorry, uh, would be complete and utter trash. D tier, bottom of a barrel, vendor, straight away trash. Now, the reason for that is that if you increase the chance at physical modifiers, you're increasing all of the physical modifiers all at the same time. Most items you want are going to have majority high tier modifiers because they're so substantially better. Increasing all the physical modifiers here is still going to give you the same chance at getting T1 physical as T8 physical, which sucks, man. You are not going to have any luck. So that brings us to the third modifier over here, which is modifier tier rating. Now, this is what's going to save the day and make it so you can actually make good items. And the way it works is a little bit of confusing. And if I didn't watch the interview with Mark uh, on Zizarin's podcast or whatever, I would have no clue either. Now, fortunately, we do know how it works straight from the dev's mouth uh, and we can get into it. So the way it works is as follows. Uh, 100 uh, tier rating, which you guys can see in game here. If I bring up the thing here, you can see if I have any hundreds. I see it says 100 fire modifier tier rating. What that means is half. What does that mean? What does half mean? Well, what, what, what does it mean? Okay, half, it means half the modifiers are removed from the tier pool. So if we take a look at fire here, if I have 100%, it's going to take the bottom half and remove them as a percentage. Okay, so there's 10 modifiers here, so it's going to take all these five and you cannot roll them anymore. That is the way it's going to work here. Now, the way it gets a little bit confusing is when you get to higher tiers than 100. So 100 is pretty easy, 100% reduced Tier modifiers, easy, half, makes sense. Now, when you get to 200%, it's 200% reduced tier modifiers. I think, I mean, it's, it's a bit confusing in my head, uh, but basically that means two thirds of the tier modifiers are removed, uh, which is pretty damn good as well. And you can keep scaling that up and keep going crazier and crazier and crazier with the fractions uh, and you just, you keep getting it more and more narrow. The more tier rating you have, the more restrictive it gets. But the thing to understand here is there are breakpoints, and the breakpoints are really, really important. You need to hit certain breakpoints or your item will be trash. And the reason for that is that the odds are stacked in your favor, against you, sorry, they're stacked not in your favor. Uh, you can see here that most of the bad tier modifiers have a way, 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 way higher weight than the really good tier uh, modifiers here. So an acceptable bow, not even a good bow, an acceptable bow will have all three of the elements at at least tier three. Anything lower than that is basically, you know, not very good. So you would need to remove as many of these tiers as possible, preferably all of them. And you need to know how much tier rating modifier do I need to have in order to remove those well uh, I'm not very good at that stuff on the fly so I went ahead and made a very very rudimentary calculator I'm sure someone else is gonna make a really awesome one which is gonna be way better than mine uh, let me see if I can find it here uh, corpse cooker it's over to the right here Okay, where, well, here we are. Okay, found it. Okay, so basically what I've cooked up here is a bit of a calculator, which is going to help me out. So if we take however many modifiers it has, uh, so fire damage has 10. So we put that in here, 10 mod number. So we've got 10 mods uh, and we put in a weight. It's going to tell us how many tiers remain. So if we have 400 weight, for example, uh, 2.5 tiers will remain. And that basically means that anything on here, uh, which is not within the first three, I believe it rounds uh, rounds up, unfortunately, uh, will be removed. You cannot roll them. Impossible to roll them. Assuming your item is item level 82. Now, that's that's a whole nother kettle of fish, but assuming your item level is maximum and all mods are eligible for this, you know, kind of area here, it will cut off the bottom portion here and it will give you only the higher tier ones. So now you have control over what modifiers will roll and what modifiers won't and which tiers will roll uh, with complete pretty much detail. You know, there's a few percent chance here or there, but that can be solved by using more corpses. And the trick remaining is going to be understanding which tags to increase 
decrease and raise the tiers of. And that is how to get a good item uh, with this lead mechanic. So I've gone ahead and done a bit of theory crafting here, and I'm going to walk you guys through the thought process on crafting a three tier, um, uh, high tier elemental attack damage bow, uh, because that's what I want. That's what I'm trying to craft, and I'll take you guys through the process here. All right, so let's take a look at this bow here. I hope you guys are somewhat following, or it's at least interesting, because uh, it is a bit complicated. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take a look at bows here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to increase the tier of modifiers. Because as I mentioned, any bow which doesn't have majority tier 3 or higher uh, of the elemental attacks are garbage it's trash so we need to make sure we jack those up here so the very 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 first thing we want to do is get a bunch of attack tag modifiers here and the reason we're going for attack tag is because it does all three of these at once uh, because of all of the attack tag instead of going cold tier rating fire tier rating and lightning tier rating and using so many corpses we can do attack and hit them all in one fell swoop now the problem here is if we did elemental for example uh, it wouldn't be as strong now why is that well if we only increase the tier of elemental we would basically be removing all of these mods from the pool yes but we wouldn't be removing any of the other mods from the pool so we'd still have a very very high chance to get all of these modifiers here uh, in the physical damage right which is not what we want uh, we'd much rather cut out all all of the low tier modifiers that can possibly roll from the item. So not only are we, attack, uh, are we cutting out the lightning, fire, and cold modifiers here uh, with our attack tier increase, we're cutting out all of the low physical damage ones, all of the um, the low socket of gems ones, or all of the uh, hybrid fears, increased fears, and elemental damage with attack. They're all getting obliterated, which is going to lower the total weight of the item substantially, uh, which is essentially making the chance of whatever can roll much, much smaller, which is going to be good for us because we can then jack up what we want uh, later and make it an even higher chance. So the very first thing we do is 500 attack. Uh, so if we if we check that in the calculator here, uh, and we put that in, so 500, that's going to give us only tier 2 elemental modifiers. We can now only roll tier 1 and 2 on a item level 80 to a higher bow, which is huge. So if we do roll cold fire or lightning, it will be tier 2 or higher, which is huge. Okay, very, very cool indeed. Now, next up, we need to influence things a little bit more here, because if we use all of those attack modifier um, kind of tier increases, here's what the weights are going to look like here. We're going to get uh, a sum of all these weights. So I've gone ahead and done it manually. So what happens when you remove all the bad tiers from all these modifiers is that these weights here, take a look at this here, 1800, blah, 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 here, become these weights here, because I've cut all of the bad mods out with the tier increase. And we go from having 56,000 weighting to 7,588 waiting here, which um, is much, much lower here. And you can see that it's all removed here. But you can see that that's funny. Something funny that has happened here when we cut all, all of those tier modifiers. You can see here that we went from having cold fire and lightning to being the most likely thing to roll here with 11,000, with everything else being dwarfed, to it being very, very unlikely to roll. And the reason for that is, of course, because we have cut out all of the trash, uh, which gave you the bulk of the reason why you would be rolling those mods in the first place. Now, it's only the cream of the crop, and those are actually extremely rare. So the very next step is going to be increasing the chance back up of getting these lower tier modifiers. So we can increase the chance substantially by getting a thousand percent chance to get lightning, cold, and fire, uh, which is going to modify these modifiers here from 6,616 uh, 6 to 6,160, which when you compare this against this, you're basically getting a massive chance now uh, to roll exactly what mods you want, which is really, really good. But we can take it a step further here, because 6,000 chance to roll a T1 or T, uh, T2 fire damage roll is good, but we have to also remember uh, that we do still have stuff like 700 waiting chance to roll chaos, which could still happen, which would result in a brick bow, which is not what we want. We want determinism here, baby. Uh, so we're going to use some less uh, chance as well to kind of dilute those down and make it so it's less likely to get them uh, overall. So we're going to use less chance at physical, uh, which is going to reduce the chance of all these physical modifiers. Uh, we're going to use less chance at chaos, and a less chance at gems, uh, which is going to reduce all of those weights down, which you can see I've modified these as well, and you can see the overall result here. So now, instead, we have a total of 20,000 uh, weighting, and we have almost 18,000 of that weighting uh, being T1 and T2 of fire, cold, and lightning, which is completely crazy. 
Now granted, this is gonna take some time to set up. Uh, you guys are gonna need the right corpses and you need to make sure that you do use the right increases, decreases and have enough attack tags in order to make this work. And this isn't actually even considering the suffixes. When you wanna get into suffixes and getting crit and attack speed and all sorts of stuff like that, uh, it gets even more complicated, of course. Uh, so you guys are gonna have to check that out as well. But my plan was to just get the prefixes done, get them good, and then make sure I do a multi-mod and have a really good bow. But you can go ahead and go crazy with it. You can fill up the whole graveyard and go nuts with it. But hopefully this is giving you guys a bit of an idea on exactly how to manipulate uh, everything using the different modifiers. Now, of course, you can go even more crazy. There's like even more insane modifiers which you can do, which make it even more insane and all sorts of stuff like that. But that's gonna have to be future videos, guys. We're almost already at 20 minutes here. So the exact recipe for making my bow is going to be this as follows. Uh, and I'm gonna set it to be five or six explicit modifiers. I'm not sure yet, uh, but I may also mess around with some increases to prefixes and reduces reductions to suffixes uh, to try and make sure that I absolutely do get three prefixes and two suffixes so I can remove that. Uh, if you're a crafter, you'll know what I mean, but I'm sure this is going over a bunch of people's heads anyway. All right, okay, that's basically all I have for you guys on crafting. Now you can apply that to any item in the entire game, no problems, uh, and you can kind of make what you want of it. Now, a lot of them aren't gonna be as clean cut as bows, uh, but I've looked into scepters uh, for the uh, Exanguinate Miner, and I've also looked into body armors for the Trickster version of that build. Those are also reasonably easy to get a lot of t high tier modifiers deterministically, uh, so you can make stuff like that as well. Now, in order to actually get the modifiers for that, uh, you're gonna need a lot of corpses. Uh, and right now, no one is selling corpses. I've tried to buy them so I can make my bows, uh, but no one's really selling them right now. And I don't know really how to change that other than just trying to make sure people know how it works. Uh, but try and sell some corpses corpses, see how they work. But if you are trying to sell some corpses, I personally, as a buyer and someone trying to use the mechanic, would not buy anything which is not close to, or if not, the maximum roll of the modifier I'm looking for. And the reason for that is that you only have so many spaces in the morgue, and also, uh, it's not very efficient to go and buy really low tier modifiers. If I need 500 attack uh, tier rating modifier, I'm not going to want to buy a 25 attack modifier rating. Because how many corpses would that even be, bro? I would need 500 divided by 25. I would need 20 corpses, which I'm not gonna buy. Uh, alternatively though, I would absolutely buy 100 attack rating modifier because I would only need five corpses then, uh, which would be completely good. So if you guys wanna know the ranges, let me give you guys a quick rundown on it. So for the increases, the minimum roll for increase is 100% increase, which I personally would not buy. Uh, and the maximum increase is 500. Uh, to give you guys a bit of perspective with the craft we just wanted then, we'd need two of lightning cold and fire in terms of the max roll of increase set. And I'd probably be willing to pay, hmm, maybe like 10C for a 500% increase of the modifier I want here, assuming that it works how I want. Uh, I haven't actually crafted a GG bow yet, but that's about what I'd pay for it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the next one is the tier rating modifier. It's in a range between 25 and 100, and the, um, the scarcer modifier is in a range between 100 and 300. So if you're on the fence about what to keep and what to bottle, uh, make sure you get rid of all of the minimum roll ones. I very much doubt anyone's going to want to buy them, and no one's probably going to want to use them because it fills up the entire morgue. And if you're wondering on what might sell, just go with the maximum range, which I have mentioned there, or any of the meta modifier ones, which give you like extra chance at duplicating stuff or corrupting stuff. People will probably end up buying those as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this very first and very technical video here. Uh, please give it a like if it gave you uh, any information about that for the algorithm and it helped you out. Uh, but until next time, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll have plenty more information coming uh, after I figure out a little bit more stuff. Until then, cheers.